So can we just linger on uh, gear does the completeness sure. theorem? You mentioned the two components there. You know, there's so many questions to ask. Like, what what is the difference between provability and uh, truth? What is true and what is provable? Maybe that's a good yeah. Line this is to draw. a really core distinction that it's fascinating to me to go back and read the, even the early 20th century people before Gödel and Tarski. And they were totally sloppy about this distinction between <laughs> truth and proof. It wasn't yeah. clear at all until Gödel, basically. Although even as late as Bourbaki has a kind of confusion in this foundational work, so this standard graduate-level textbooks used in France, in the presentation of logic, they are conflating truth and proof. To be true for them means to be provable. So in the early days, maybe it wasn't clear enough that the concept of truth needed a mathematical investigation or analysis. Maybe it was already taken to be fully clear. But because of the incompleteness theorem, we realized that actually there's quite subtle things happening, right? And so why don't we talk about this distinction a bit? To me, it's absolutely core and fundamental to our understanding of mathematical logic now, mm -hmm. this distinction between truth and proof. So, truth is on the semantic side of the syntax semantics dichotomy. Truth has to do with the nature of, of reality. I mean, okay, when I talk about reality, I'm not talking about physical reality. I'm talking about mathematical reality. So, so we have a concept of something being true in a structure, a statement being true in a mathematical structure. Like maybe you have the real field or something and you want to know, does it satisfy this statement or that statement? Or you have a group of some kind, or maybe you have a graph. This is a particular kind of mathematical structure that has a bunch of vertices and edges and you want to know, um, you know, does does this graph satisfy that statement? And Tarski gave this absolutely wonderful account of the nature of truth in what's now known as the disquotational theory of truth. And what Tarski says is the sentence, quote, snow is white, unquote, is true if and only if snow is white. And what he means by that is look, to say Truth is a property of an assertion, so we can think of the assertion as a syntactically. So the 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 sentence is true if and only if the content of the sentence is the case. Yeah. You know? So the sentence "snow is white," you know, in quotations, uh, is true. That just means that snow is white, and that. That's why it's called the disquotational theory, because we we remove the quotation marks mm -hmm. from the assertion, right? And and you can use this idea of disquotation to give a formal definition of truth in a mathematical structure of a statement in a formal language. So for example, if I have a formal language that allows me to make atomic statements about the objects and relations of the structure, and I can build up a formal language with, you know, with with the logical connectives of and and or and implies and not and so on, and maybe I have quantifiers, right? Then, for example, to say that the structure satisfies phi and psi, that that single statement, phi and psi, I'm thinking of that as one statement, just means that it satisfies phi and it satisfies psi. And if you notice what happened there, I... At first, the and was part of the sentence, inside the sentence. But then in the second part, I was using the word and to refer to the conjunction of the two conditions. So Yeah, it has the disquotation. Yeah, it has yeah. the disquotation. And so this idea can be done for all the logical connectors and quantifiers and everything. You, you're applying Tarski's idea of disquotation. And it allows you to define by induction the, the truth of any assertion in a formal language inside any mathematical structure. And so to say that a sentence is true, first of all, it's ambiguous unless you tell me which structure you're talking about it being true in. Um, and so maybe we have in mind the standard model of arithmetic or something with the natural numbers and the arithmetic structure, and I want to know, is a given statement true in that structure? Then then we have a, a formal definition of what that means according to the Tarski recursive definition of truth. 
Okay, that's truth. Proof, on the other hand, is, you know, in this Hilbert way of thinking, we can develop proof theory. What is a proof for a mathematician, for a mathematical logician? A proof is a certain sequence or or arrangement of sentences in the formal language that accord with the logical rules of a proof system. So there's certain modes of reasoning that are allowed. So if you know A and you know A implies B in the proof, then at a later step, you're allowed to um, uh, to write B as a consequence. So if you know A and you know A implies B, those are both two statements that are known, then you can deduce B as a consequence according to the rule of modus ponens. This is the rule modus ponens. And, you know, there's a lot of other rules. Some people would call this uh, implication elimination. There's different kinds of proof systems. There's a lot of different formal proof systems that exist that are studied by the proof theorists. And all of them have the property that they're sound, which means that if the premises of the argument are all true in a structure, and you have a proof to get a conclusion, then the conclusion is also true in that structure. So that's what it means to be sound, that proof proofs preserve truth. They're truth-preserving arguments. Okay, But also, um, the proof systems are also generally complete. They're both sound and complete. And complete means um, that whenever a statement is a consequence, a logical consequence of some other statements, which means that whenever the assumptions are true, then the then the consequence is also true in in the structure. So whenever you have a logical consequence, then there is a proof of it. Okay, and the proof systems generally have both of those properties: they're sound and complete. There's a third property. A lot of logicians talk about sound and complete, sound and complete this, sound and complete that. But actually, there's a hidden third adjective that they should always be talking about in any such case, which is that um, you should be able to recognize whether or not something is a proof or not. So there's a computable aspect uh, to to the proof systems. We want to be able to recognize whether something is a proof. It should be computably decidable whether a given sequence of statements is a proof or not. So we, we don't want a proof system in which someone claims to have a proof, but we can't check that fact, that whether it's a proof or not. Mm-hmm. We want to be able to, you know, to correctly adjudicate all claims to having a proof. Yeah, a mathematician comes to mind that said, he has a proof, but the margins are too small to, <laughs> That's to continue. Right, exactly. <laughs> so so it, that doesn't count as yeah. a proof. So generally, all the classical proof systems that are used are sound and complete and also computably decidable in the sense that we can decide whether something is a proof or not. So what is, again, the tension between truth and proof, which is more powerful, and how do the two interplay with the contradictions that we've been discussing? So the incompleteness theorem is the question whether we could, say, write down a theory for arithmetic, say for the standard model of arithmetic, where we have the natural numbers and plus and times and zero, one and less than and so on. In that formal language, we can express an enormous number of statements about the nature, not only of arithmetic, but actually by various coding methods, we can express essentially all of finite mathematics in that structure. So the question would be, can we write down a computable list of axioms that will answer all those questions by proof? In other words, we want to have a complete theory, a theory of arithmetic that proves all and only the true statements. That would be the goal. Hilbert would love that. I mean, that would be supportive of Hilbert's program to have such a complete theory of arithmetic. And Gödel proved that this is impossible. You cannot write down a computable list of axioms that is complete in that sense. There will always be statements. If the theory is consistent, there will always be statements that you cannot prove and you cannot refute. So they are independent of that theory. How traumatic is that, that there are statements that are independent from the theory? I mean, my view is that, yeah, this isn't traumatic at all. This is rather completely eye-opening in terms of our understanding of the nature of mathematical reality. I mean, we're not... we, We understand this profound fact about our situation with regard to mathematical truth. The incompleteness theorem tells us 
look, we just can't write down a list of axioms that is going to be consistent and is going to answer all the questions. It's impossible. And so I don't think of it as trauma. I just think, look, this is the nature of, of mathematical reality, and it's good that we know it. And so now we need to move on from that and you know, do what we can in light of that. Is it fair to say that, that in general, it means if I give you a statement, you can't know if your axiomatic system would be able to prove it. That's right. In general, you cannot, the, the provability problem, we can formulate it as a decision problem. Given a theory and given a statement, is that statement a consequence of that theory? Yeah. This is one of the most famous decision problems. In fact, the very first one, because it's the it's equivalent to the Hilbert Ackerman um, and Chidon's problem, which is also appearing in the title of Turing's 1936 paper that was so important for computability theory. So it's it's a formulation of the Entscheidung's problem. Does a given theory have a given statement as a logical consequence? Which, because of Gödel's completeness theorem, not his incompleteness theorem, but his earlier completeness theorem, Gödel had proved that the proof systems that they studied did have this completeness property that I mentioned. So provability is the same as logical consequence. So and this is an undecidable decision problem. Turing proved, and uh, and we now know it's equivalent to the halting problem. 